made it home, I dug her out, then I made her one of my aces Marijuana fragrance, this tree here is outrageous Want me to play in your city, send an email to my agent Yo, what's going on everybody? It is Straight Outta Boston here, aka the King of Boston And today we're back for episode 47 of the Miami Marlins franchise here And this is the first game of season 5 of the franchise As we're going to head into the middle of April going up against the Minnesota Twins We enter this game 9-4 and four. The Twins are 7 and I believe that it says 6, although I can't quite tell 7-6 and six or 7-5 and five. So, two teams that have gotten off to relatively good starts The Marlins obviously a bit better than the Twins But I think the Twins would be very satisfied with how they've begun Now we did play this team once before in this franchise It was either last season or two seasons ago When we did that Matt Moore matchup against Brett Anderson And we did beat them very handily in Target Field Yeah, Target Field But we're here in Miami and I think the Twins have improved a little bit in terms of their roster and just in terms of talent and all that good stuff. So we got Matt Harrison on the mound today. It is his first, well, it's his third start as a Marlin. It's his first that I've been playing with him. And he's had a very good simulation start. He's 2-0 uh, in his two simulated games so far with a 104 error race. So hopefully we can continue that success. Here's the Twins lineup. You got notables like Aaron Hicks. You got Hanley Ramirez down there in the seven hole. Morneau and Maurer are still on the team. So getting right into this game, 0-2 count to Aaron Hicks, and on the third pitch of the outing, Matt Harrison gets Hicks to go down, looking on that two-seam up and away. Hicks disagrees, but nonetheless, it's strikeout number one. Now, here is pitch number six of the inning, and it is going to be a strike three call to Justin Turner. Looks like this ump is not really being too friendly with these Twins players. So we're going with the ninth pitch of the inning, a chance for the immaculate inning, and Maurer goes down on the curveball, a nine-pitch, three-strikeout inning. A absolutely perfect start. For Matt Harrison as he does achieve the immaculate inning is I believe what it's called. You got to look at the uh, Marlins lineup right here. Logan Morrison is getting the day off so we have a bit of sh a bit of shuffle in the middle of the lineup as Avi Sayel Garcia will take over at first and we move Machado Yelich up to the 4-5 hole. Sayel takes the 6 hole. So here we go Jose Iglesias gets on to start at this game and he's going for second. Iglesias is in there safely as he will swipe second base and he is going to get a runner. In scoring position now with no outs, Sander Bogarts is up. Bogarts is going to let that one go as it gets behind Maurer, and Iglesias takes third base. So we got a runner on third with no outs in the inning. And now here we go, 3-2 count to Bogarts. He's going to walk on ball four outside the 97-mile-an-hour fastball. Could not be located in the zone. So now the next batter is going to be Giancarlo Stan, who we've been hitting in the four hole this year so far with Lomo hitting third. But he is back up to the third with Machado hitting fourth today with Lomo out of the lineup. So that's going to be an RBI double down the left field line. And the Marlins will take a 1-0 lead as Bogarts advances to second. Or third, I should say. And Giancarlo Stan gets an RBI double. It's his 1,000th career hit. Congratulations to him. 1-1 one, one count to Vinny Machado. Chance to put in some extra runs. That is going to be granted the second. Fired on to first in time. But that's a productive out as the run does come home. And it's a 2-0 lead for the Miami Marlins. Now two outs in the inning. Avisayo Garcia up. And Garcia is going to hit that one into center field. That is going to be tracked down by Aaron Hicks. And that will retire the side. So Jose Barrios gets out of the inning. Only allowing two runs. Now here we go. Top three. First pitch of the AB to Michael Choice. The recently called up Michael Choice in real life by the Oakland A's. He's going to get that one down into the gap, and that is going to be a leadoff double, or a one-out double, I should say, for the Twins, as they will get a runner in scoring position here, trying to put some runs on the board against Matt Harrison. Here's the pitcher, Jose Barrios, who's swinging away, and he's got a nice little swing right there as he gets a liner into left field for a base hit. Yelich over to field to fire into second as there's no threat of the run coming home. And then here, a 1-2 pitch to Hicks gets away from Harrison, and Hicks gets hit in the back, and that will load the bases. For Justin Turner. Now Turner is going to hit this 1 1 pitch back up to Harrison off of him. Picks it up, fires home offline, and the run comes home. So that run is going to score. Michael Choice would come around, and now it's a 2 1 game. Here's Joe Maurer, his first pitch. He gets jammed, pops this one up to left field. Yelich over to field it, and he's going to misplay it. Looks like he tried to get a little running start right there. Fields is going to have to fire it home. The second run's coming around, and he will score, and the Twins take a 3 2 lead. Off of the error by Christian Yelich. Of course, that would be counted as a hit because it's not be the show, but it is what it is. Now, here is Justin Morneau. 1 1 count, and Morneau's going to line this one past Donovan Solano. Stanton over to field. He's going to come up firing to the plate. The throw is offline and not in time. So it's a 4 2 ball game now as the Twins have taken the lead. Now, here we go. Two outs in the inning to Max Kepler. He is the batter, and Kepler's going to pop this one up. Foul territory, third base side. Actually, it might stay fair, but either way, Bogarts is under it. And he will make the catch 
for the third and final out of the inning, but the Twins get four and they take a 4-2 lead. Here we go now, bottom 3-2-2 three, two, two count to Vinny Machado, and the pitch from Jose Barrios is strike three swinging on the changeup as Barrios started to settle in as we got further into this game after a rough first inning. Here we go, top four. 2-2 two, two count, two Hanley Ramirez, and he will go down swinging on that two seam. So another strikeout for Matt Harrison as he will look to settle down after a rocky inning. Here we go, top four still. Michael Choice up, 2-2 two, two count to him. And Choice is going to line this one into right field. He said Harrison's number through these first two at-bats for Choice. As he's going to get that one down into the gap, and that will be a double for Michael Choice. Another one-out double, I do believe. So now here we go, next batter is going to be, or two batters later with two outs in the inning, Aaron Hicks. And Hicks is going to hit this one back up the middle for a base hit. Machado over to field, he's going to come up firing. The throw home will be not in time. And that will score the run. Michael Choice comes around for a second run of the game. Hicks gets his first hit of the game. And it's a 5-2 lead for the Twins now. Next batter is Justin Turner. He will go down on that cutter. But another rocky inning for Harrison as he has a lot five runs through four innings so far today. It has not been a good start. For the guys who looked so impressive in his first couple appearances as a Miami Marlin. He gets Mauer to go down, go down right there on the two seam. That's going to be one away in the fifth inning. Now with two away, Max Kepler would be up. And Kepler's going to pop this one up into right field. Stanton over to field it. And he will retire. It will make the catch and retire the side. But that would do it for Harrison as his number would come up in the batting order in the next inning. So we would pinch it for him. And we're going to bring in Nick Turley, the man who's kind of competing for this fifth starter spot in the rotation with Justin Nicolino. He would come in to pitch for the next couple innings. Top six, two outs. Aaron Hicks hits it into deep center field. There's already a runner on first, but Machado was there to track it down. And that will retire the side for the top of the sixth. So we're going to head into the bottom of the sixth. Still a 5-2 game now. Top seven. Runners on first and third. Trevor Plouffe up to back. Grounder to short. To second for one. On to first. And they will turn the double play and get out of the first and third jam with one out. So Turley not doing, you know, he's not really looking impressive, but he is getting out of the inning stat, allowing a run. But check out that catch right there by Max Kepler, the right fielder, robbing Jose Iglesias of a base hit. So we're going to bring in J.J. Hoover now to pitch at the top of the eighth inning. He's looked very impressive in his first couple appearances as a Miami Marlin with a sub-1 ERA. 1-2 count to Max Kepler, and Kepler will go down swinging on the fastball right there. That would make it one away in the inning. Now here we go, bottom of the eighth, Vinny Machado up the 3-1 count. Machado is going to walk on ball four as that one missed low. And Berrios appears to be getting a little bit tired right here as Christian Yelich will come up next. Machado is off. It's a hit and run. Yelich into the right field gap. That is going to get down and roll all the way to the wall. Machado rounding third. He will be waved home and he will score easily. And it's an RBI double for Christian Yelich on the hit and run. That cuts the lead down to a two-run ball game. So Ryan Presley is going to come in for Jose Barrios now as he will leave a runner on second base with two away in the inning. In the bottom of the order coming up next, here's Avisael Garcia. He has struggled mightily out of the gap. His average is not even at 1,000 yet. That's grounded off the pitcher to third baseman. He's going to fire it. It's over the first baseman's head. That one gets into the stands. Yelich will come around and score. Avisael up to second base. Now here's your next batter. Rob Bradley, the first pitch to Bradley. He lines this one into left field. That's going to get down into the gap. Center fielder over to field it. He'll fire it into the cutoff man, but not before Rob Bradley drives home the tying run. And it's a 5-5 ball game. So a little two-out magic here from the Miami Marlins. And we're going to bring in Denard Spain to pinch run for Rob Bradley at second base. Meaning Christian Vasquez will have to come in and catch the rest of this ball game. But Presley would retire the next batter, so we're going to advance here. Top nine runner on first. Aaron Hicks is going to strike out, swinging on that 2-2 pitch right there. That would make it one away in the inning. Now with one away, Justin Turner up. Here's the 0-2 pitch to him, and Turner is going to go down, swinging on that curveball down and in, and he is not happy with himself right there. So now two away. The next batter is going to be Joe Maurer, the 1-2 pitch, and Maurer will go down swinging. So after allowing a leadoff base runner, Hoover sets down the rest of the lineup, 1-2-3 really through the heart of that lineup one going one two three in the order taking them all down by way of the case so here comes Trevor May into pitch for the Minnesota Twins it's going to be the bottom of the ninth pinch hitter Steven Procia is up the 0-1 count to him and he's going to end up taking this one into right field for a base hit so we got a leadoff base runner here for the Marlins now he is on first base Iglesias is up and Iglesias is going to lay one down down the first baseline May over to field it fires it to Morneau at first and that's going to make it one away in the inning. Now two away. Giancarlo stands the next batter. He's going to line this one into left field. And that is going to be caught by the left fielder. That will retire the side. And we're headed into extras. So we're going to bring in our closer, Luis Gonzalez, here to pitch the top of the 10th inning. You can see his stats so far on the year. He's the man we did acquire in the Jorge Soler deal. Here's the 1-2 count in the 11th inning. And he's going to get that guy striking out looking. So Luis Gonzalez looking good so far. He's pitched two innings so far in this game. 
But bottom 11, he's still up as we did not have anyone left on the bench. He was forced to hit right here. He's actually going to go down swinging. So we're going to head into the top of the 12th inning. We're going to actually go to the bottom of the 12th after Gonzalez doing another shutout inning. Iglesias is going to hit that one into left field for a base hit. And we get a leadoff base runner here to start things off in the bottom of the 12th inning. So Iglesias is on first base. Now the next batter is going to be Xander Bogarts. Iglesias takes off. The throw down is going to be not in time. And Jose Iglesias swipes his second bag of the ball game. Now the 1-1 one, one count. Xander Bogarts it looks like he's going to lay one down down the third base line. Mauer jumps up ready to field it. He's going to fire it to first base. And it's going to be not in time. Bogarts beats it out. So we go first and third for Giancarlo Stanton. Bogarts is going. And Bogarts is gunned out at second base. So we got a runner on third here with one out. Giancarlo Stan still up at the bat. Now it's going to be a 2-0 count. The 2-0 pitch from Mace. He will kick and deal. And that is lined into left field for a base hit that gets down. Iglesias is going to come home. And the Miami Marlins win it and walk off fashion. Giancarlo Stan wins it in the 12th. And the Marlins get their 10th win of the season as Iglesias comes around and scores. And we win our first extra innings game of the season, I do believe. So, Luis Gonzalez gets the win. Trevor May will get the loss right there. Very good pitching from both sides out of the bullpens. Once uh, after, I guess, Ryan Presley and Jose Barrios combined to allow those three runs in the eighth inning. Other than that, it was a pretty good performance by Twins pitching, especially in the bullpen. And Luis Gonzalez came in through three shutout innings. Very impressed by him. J.J. Hoover, two shutout innings. Great game from him. Jose Iglesias had three hits, including two stolen bases and two runs. Very impressed out of him. It was a very good all-around win. We showed some resiliency. We showed some true character in this ballgame. And I'm very excited about what this team has to offer for the future. So anyway, that's going to wrap up this video for me. So I thank you guys for watching. Hope you did enjoy. It does out. Peace.